guys, today we're going to continue working on um, the platformer. Um, I got a suggestion from one person to do um, like a dialogue um, that asks a question when you hit something or you, throw, you go through an object, say um, coin for example. So we're going to do this, um, which brings us to sort of um, object interaction between player um, and another object in the world. <clears throat> We already do um, platform interaction, but this is more uh, uh, what you can do with an object as opposed to just collision detection. So um, I'm assuming that you have finished the previous tutorial, which is tutorial number 14, um, and this is where we left off, or at least um, except the game dialogue. Um, that's the one I added in this tutorial. So go to your tutorials project, find your tutorial 14, and um, Let's just open everything. So um, most of this we already uh, did in the previous tutorial, so I'm just going to go through the things I've added. And the, um, the first thing, or the first place to go, is the level data. What we're going to do with the level file is to add two um, things, so or two objects. So number two is, or character two, which is going to represent our coin object. So zero is nothing, one is a platform, and um, two will be a coin. As you can see, there are two coins, uh, one over here and the one over there. And that's it for this file. Now, if we go back to our main, we're going to create a new array list, um, the same as with platforms, just named coins. Um, we're going to have very basic event handling. Um, this is typically uh, done by a lot more complicated event engine, but we're going to do just very simple ones. So dialog event false, um, which says essentially, if it's true, then the um, player has requested dialog event, or the game has requested the dialog event. And running is um, whether the game is running currently. So everything is the same. The only thing we've added um, in this tutorial is this part. So um, like I said in the previous tutorial, if you want to add a new object, just do an arrow case, put a character to um, the, assign the character to the case and because our coin is represented by character 2, this is where we parse the coin. So we'll create our node, we'll create entity. This is the uh, method that we um, wrote in the previous tutorial. Simply pass color gold, and everything else is exactly the same. Then once we've created the coin, we add it to the list of coins. And yeah, so in the update, that was already in there. Um, so this is new. Um, this is where we check the collision between player and the coin, <clears throat> which is pretty much exactly the same as with platforms, except we don't um, move the player around when he hits the coin, because you can go, go through the coin. Uh, before we do that, if we go to create entity method, and this is the method that we did already um, with only one new addition, which is uh, basically assigning a property to a node. So if you have like another class called game entity or game object, then you wouldn't do this um, using properties, you would simply set a boolean field and say is alive or set alive, something like that. But if you're dealing with generic or general um, classes like node, then what you could do is specify certain properties which are um, relevant to only one particular set of objects like um, coins, or in our case to any entity that has been created. We assign the value alive um, or the value true to the property alive. 
and this set of properties is basically a hash map or observable map yeah observable map that contains uh, key object is a key and object as a value which is basically any possible object so this as you can see this is a string and this is a billion so we're saying property alive and set it to true and once we've done that we can then retrieve um, this property which we do here when we collide with a player so that when the bounding box of player intersects with the bounding box of a coin we get properties and put a live uh, false which will replace that value um, to false dialog event true so request the dialog event um, and running false so the game should not run because dialog event will be um, blocking the event or blocking the game and after we've done that because we also need to um, remove the coin from the render list or from the screen basically so we can't really do it here because we're iterating over elements and while we do that we cannot modify the underlying list uh, unless we do it with an iterator so in the for each loop if you try to delete or add a new element to the list um, it will throw what's it called concurrent modification exception or something like that so in order to avoid that you can um, do this you can also combine those two loops actually so you can do this first and put um, the collision section in here and then check if it collides if it does then do this and then uh, remove it's just having two loops is much easier to see what's going on so we get the next element within the list which is basically the same list so the same coins list we get a property uh, property named alive and we convert it or typecast it to billion and if not alive then remove the element from that list and also remove um, it from the game root and the game root is the group that contains of uh, all of our game objects so this line will remove it from the list and this line will remove it from the screen as it were so everything else is the same and yeah the only thing in the update or in the yeah update uh, in the loop is this so if running um, then update if not running then it will not run um, this method update will not run and the game will appear to have stopped or paused so if you start uh, if dialog event is true we set it to false to notify that we handled this event um, also we set all our key presses to false um, in the keys just so we don't have like post um, events because if the game is running and you, you're pressing a particular key like moving key uh, just before you hit the um, coin this event will be captured and once we start a new dialog it will not be uncaptured um, if it makes sense so sort of the key release will not be called on that scene which will mean that your key will still be pressed when you come back from the dialog and we don't want that so we manually unpress um, all keys and this is only an issue if you're um, doing game dialog as an extra stage or because you could have game dialog as a component of J um, JavaFX or extend one of the nodes and then put it as uh, one of the objects within the same scene route but having this as a stage um, allows us to sort of move um, have another window so stage is like window window frame rather and then we um, set on close request so basically when dialog is um, closed we check if dialog is correct so basically if the user or the player has answered the dialog correctly 
uh, then we do something and else we do something else once the dialog is closed we set running to true so we come back to the game um, so this is the definition of say on close request and we open the dialog so that's it for the main um, main class or um, source file and this is our game dialog um, you could import all of these things um, game dialog is 10 stage so we're extending one of the Java effects classes we're going to have text question um, field answer where the player will be typing the answer and text actual answer is the answer provided or given by the computer so computer already knows the right answer and this is the uh, boolean to keep track of uh, whether the player has answered correctly so when we create our game dialog in the constructor we create a button um, called submit and set an action means that this code is executed when the button is pressed so when the when the button is pressed field answer um, set editable false so it's it will no longer be um, changeable editable actual answer set visible to true so um, the player will see the actual answer and the correct boolean is set to the expression um, to this expression so this is if the actual answer um, gets text actually trim should be done on um, field answer because actual answer is a sort of immutable field and field answer so the user might have typed an extra space or something so we just in case we trim it um, field answer get text and we basically check the equality and this will return true if they're equal, false if they're not. And the um, resulting value will be set assigned to this um, field. Vertical box is the layout. 10 is the spacing between the elements in the box. And question, uh, we said basically in this order, question, field answer, text actual answer, and button submit. We set alignment to center, so all of these elements will be centered. We set our vertical box as the root to our scene. Set scene is um, inherited from the class stage, so we could have typed this set scene exactly the same. Uh, init modality uh, this thing is uh, basically whether you can close or uh, click on your previous um, window so this is like a window blo blocker um, if it's application model it will um, yeah like it says it will block events from being delivered to any um, other windows you'll see it in um, when, it, when it runs so our open method is like reset for everything so at this stage you would want to have some kind of question reader um, like write small class which reads questions from a file which we already did um, in hangman and a couple of tutorials ago so um, this is very easily doable and also the answer so these Part, uh, these two things in particular will typically be read from a file so that they're not hard coded. We clear the field answer so the user, um, this is where the user types the thing, editable true, um, set actual answer to the um, answer, we set visible to false, um, correct is false because we need to well, it doesn't really matter actually because we will reset it here on the button press anyway and then we show and this is again inherited from um, the stage class and just another method to return whether the pressed thing is correct 
And this is pretty much it. We can now run and you'll be able to. So this is the thing that we had before. And these are two new things, or um, coins. And yeah, so when you hit the coin, you should have a dialog appear, which will show the um, the question text. So you can make it bigger if you want. Field answer is this field. Text actual answer is here. It's hidden um, because we set visible to false. And button submit is here. So if we type for and then submit, it will also show the right answer. And it it is yeah. So this is the modal modality thing. You, c you cannot really do anything uh, with the previous window because this window will be um, so this thing will block events from going from that window to the original window. So it is just waiting for us to close it. And when we close it, it goes back to the uh, main loop here. Unclose request. When we close the thing, it will check if the dialog is correct, which is basically if the answer is correct. Um, and then it will do something um, with the correct answer and do something with the wrong answer. So this is basically where you write your own specific logic for the game. And same thing appears here. So if we type 5, it'll say that the answer is wrong. So you can do something else. Uh, well, yeah, and this isn't the only thing you can do with uh, sort of interaction with the objects. At this point you might add like score so when you hit the coin um, when you gather it you'll get points for that and yeah so basically I'm showing you different ways uh, using JavaFX in your applications and it's just really up to you to sort of think of um, new things and other ways of I know, extending your game, modifying your game. And as always, leave your suggestions. And if they are doable in one tutorial, then um, I'll be happy to do it. And thanks for watching.